I really need to script these videos a lot more carefully and in more detail because... <laughs> what to say? Hello everyone, it's Talia from Fictional Wanderings and today I have a little romance wrap-up for the month of November because I read a lot of no romance books. I needed the escape. I needed the fuzzy feelings that the books gave me and I ended up reading six of them so I decided to separate them from my um, overall wrap-up. Basically it was a very cutesy and swoony month for me and I just wanted to share them with you because there are some very good gems in there. Some of them are very well known but if you haven't had the chance to pick them up by any chance I said chance way too many times, but it's okay. Um, you can maybe take this as encouragement and I can be one of those booktubers to force you to read the most recent heartthrob. Is that a co coherent sentence? So, the first romance book that I read was Vicious by LJ Shen. This was my first LJ Shen book and let me tell you, I um, I don't know how to feel about this. I give this a four stars just out of enjoyment because it's sort of like a bully romance um, in dual timelines. So this girl's family is working at a very rich family's mansion and that family happens to have a son that's her age and is very mean to her but is obviously attracted to her and she's attracted to him so they have this banter and like bullying situation going on in the high school years and then we fast forward maybe like seven years and he's he started this whole company with his friends and the girl ends up working for him and the romance kind of flourishes back again there. Um, I didn't tell you the names. The name kind of is ridiculous because the guy is called Vicious. Everyone literally just calls him Vicious. It took me, surprisingly, a very short amount of time to grow out of my cringe and just accept it as, as is. His name is Vicious. It's fine. And it's Vicious's... Vicious's... Vicious and Amelia's romance in this dual timeline and not that I like bullies in real life, obviously who the fuck would like them. We all like reading about bad boys and I think mm, I, I might have just enjoyed this one a little bit. There were some plot inconsistencies, that's why the four stars, but overall it was a very enjoyable read. So if you're not too put off by the bullying aspect, there are many steamy scenes, there is an eventually kind of sweet romance ensuing, and I don't know, I had a very good time reading it, so if you want to pick it up, go pick it up. The second book I read was The Opposite. Well, not exactly The Opposite, actually, because it's kind of like a second chance romance too, but I read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren and oh my god, this one gave me all the cuddly and fuzzy feelings that I could ever ask for. <sighs> okay, composing myself for a little bit. <sighs> Let me just um, parody the noises I made while reading this book. My mom gave me such like weird looks across the couch. She was like, oh my god, my daughter has finally gone mental. I was like, eee! Oh, ah, come on! That was just the gist of me reading this book. So this is basically Josh and Hazel's romance, and they knew each other from college, but never really dated. Hazel dated around his friends a little bit, and he was always like, oh my god, this girl is crazy because Hazel is so unapologetic and witty, says the wrong things all the time, can't hold her tongue, and she's very, like, a lively person. And Josh has always been like, whoa, Hazel, Hazel is a lot. But Hazel has a crush on him a little bit, but then many years later, Hazel 
meets him at a work party and they end up sharing a flat for a period of time, which is one of my favorite tropes. It's cliche, but like forced proximity, you have to share the flat, you have to interact with each other at some point, and basically they develop this friendship and start going on blind dates. They set, set each other up with people and go on double dates, but eventually end up with each other at the end of each night. And they're like, oh my god, do we want this? Do we not want this? What does she feel? What does he feel? And you just, you're just there for the ride all along. The only thing that made me give this four stars was the ending. I could have done without that part. It was too cookie cutter and like <clears throat> unnecessary to have a look in the future. I just, I was like, I do not, I really did not want that image in my mind. But other than that, the romance, the friendship, the banter, the, oh, the, th the thoughts they had for each other while they lived in the same apartment. It was so cute, so heartwarming, and just go read this one, okay? And then we have The Proposal, which is a book I gave three stars to, much like The Wedding Date, which was the first book in the series. Jasmine Guillory's romances kind of, I don't know, it was easy enough to get through, but I just did not care for the characters and I think I'm not gonna read a Jasmine Guillory book for a while now because there are so many other books that I could be reading. <laughs> Carlos meets this girl called Nicole when her boyfriend her boyfriend of five months by the way, five, only five months, proposes in a stadium and at a baseball game and they're on the Megatron like the proposal is spelled out in the on the Megatron and then when she is like I wish we talked about this everyone starts booing and she feels horrible and then they break up and Carlos and his sister sister Carlos and his sister kind of end up rescuing Nicole from that environment and they end up going on dates uh, it was enjoyable enough Things I did not enjoy. Carlos's extreme, like, protective masculinity. I need to be the man in this situation. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't like this attitude. Not at all. Other than that, this was just like a meh romance um, in the middle of my romance readathon because I read these in a matter of like one and a half weeks. <laughs> Moving on. The next one is my only five star, which is The Kiss Quotient by Helena Wong. Guys, guys, oh my goodness. It's, mm. this book tugged at every string in my heart. It's cute, it's steamy, it's romantic, it's, Everything. It's very witty as well because the situation is, okay, let me just set this up for you. In case you haven't heard already, this is one of the most popular romance books. Um, I hear about it from every book booktuber that I follow and that reads romance. It's just out there, but it's basically a woman whose name is Stella. She is on the autism spectrum and Stella is very good at her job. She's an econometrician, I think, and she's very good with numbers, her job, but not very good with social skills or sex. So naturally, uh, when her family it gets kind of concerned uh, with her lack of boyfriend, she decides to educate herself on dating and sex and what do you do? Basically, you hire a male escort to teach you all of that and this male escort, Michael, is the opposite character to what you would expect from a male escort. And he's trying to take care of his mother, he's sweet, he's caring, and he notices Stella's um, fears and what she doesn't feel comfortable doing, and she, he basically 
envelops her with the most comforting hug of like care and caution and I just, my heart did cartwheels in my chest while reading this because, oh god, oh god, oh god. First of all, the representation, we're, we love it, we're here for it, it's so good. This is the first book that I read that had um, a main character that had Asperger's and Helen Huang actually um, includes many like s resources at the very back of the book so that you can read more about people who are on the aut autism spectrum and this book made me want to learn more about this and I I just I care so much more because her characters are so lifelike you can understand the thoughts that go through Stella's head so clearly her thought process is so vividly put like displayed. I was just fascinated. My heart was throbbing for Michael. My brain was just shipping the two so hard. If you haven't read this book, screw any other book I have on this list and go read this one because this really just warmed my heart, put me in such a better mood that I was like, okay, mental decay kind of re reversed at least for a while now, which is, you know, saying a lot in this pandemic. What can I say? Go read The Kiss Quotient. The fifth and the sixth book, I want to talk about them together because they are the first and the second book in the Royals series. I don't even know actually the series name, but the first one is Paper Princess and the second one is Broken Prince by Aaron Watt. I don't know how I feel about these. I gave the first one four stars and the second one three stars um, because I enjoyed them while reading them, but the concept is so similar to Vicious. This girl, Ella, is working as a stripper somewhere trying to uh, earn her life after her mother dies, and apparently she has some relation to a very rich man. She doesn't know her dad, so... Um, this, when that, when the dad dies, his best friend kind of takes Ella under his wing and naturally invites her to live in his mansion with the five very, 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 very attractive boys. Um, so there are some problematic-ish issues. There is bullying, there is the fact that they're almost like step-siblings, but not really, you know, because they're not, they're not related in any way, shape, or form. When this girl moves in, the boys are so not into it. They're like, she's here to uh, funnel money out, out of our dad. She ends up going to high school with them, but there's this romantic attraction between her and a brother called Reed. Um, the family is dysfunctional. Each brother has so many problems of their own, um, but I really enjoyed the dynamic in the first book until like the last 30 pages of the book and in the last 30 pages there was so much drama like squeezed into those pages and we were left with a cliffhanger that was like uh, uh okay, okay but like why why did it have to go there and the second book just picks up right where the first one left off and I just didn't feel the second one at all because they there's kind of like a fallout and then they get back together. I gave it three stars, the second one, but I don't think I'm gonna read more in the series. It was fun. It was it was fun while it lasted, but I'm not here for it. I can read the sequel to Vicious maybe because that one did many of the tropes that we see in both series so much better, in my opinion. Um, and I just don't care about this extremely dramatic teen life that's going on in this very rich family because it took a turn to like put Riverdale to shame with the cringe and the oh my Jesus factor and I was like eh, maybe not okay so that's my thoughts on that and that was it for the romance books that I read I hope to read so many more romances this month because it's holiday season and it's 
hopefully gonna snow sometime if climate change didn't fuck up everything. But I just feel very cozy while I'm reading a very nice romance with a cup of hot beverage and looking at, out at the snow and it's just mm, romantic on my own, but it's okay. <laughs> if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!